Hey guys, Spicy here. Today we'll be diving straight into one of the best experience, if not the best experience, that you could have in your university degree life. That is of course if you hate yourself. Well seriously, it's a big freaking pile of sh**. So yeah, today we'll be talking about the FYP. And if you don't know what an FYP is, don't be taken aback because during my first few years in university, I didn't know what the hell it was as well. So if you're here in need of someone to, you know, shed some light on what biomedical science is all about, remember to drop a like and let me know down in the comments on what you would like to know more about. So to put it simply, a final year project or aka an FYP is a project or an academic assignment that every undergraduate student must accomplish individually in order to graduate. It is usually done in our final year and hence the name, final year project, as we have less credit hours to, you know, clear off and we'd have more time to carry out our research compared to the first few years in our degree. Now, you would think that two years worth of time would be enough time for you to get everything in order and get everything done, but I assure you, you're bound to go through a shitstorm. Also, the FYP cost is heavily weighted in credit hours it is six credit hours worth each semester. So in total, it'll be 12 credit hours. And this is the heaviest weightage ever in our biomedical science course, but it isn't necessarily a bad thing because as long as you follow the instructions and you do everything well, you'd be getting 12 credit hours worth of points to help you boost your grades. But the journey itself isn't that simple. And let's first go back to where it all started. Now, even though it is a final year project, you would have to start preparing way earlier even before your final year begins. First thing to do is to survey for supervisors or research topics that you're interested in. After three years of you know, learning and exploring in this biomedical science course, you'd get a feeling of what you like and what you don't like. So yeah, start there. But for people like me though, it, this was quite of a challenge as one of my greatest weakness is being indecisive. Very indecisive. I have interest in a wide range of topics and I don't have an absolute preference towards a specific one. Well, maybe not yet, but remember, you only get to choose one single topic. So it's going to be a major life decision and you got to live with this choice for the next whole freaking year. So comment down below if you're as indecisive as me and you took like almost one hour trying to figure out whether to, to choose Charmander or Squirtle as your starter Pokemon. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So yeah, back to the topic. Those who have already, you know, um, have an idea of who they want their supervisors to be or what kind of research topics that they are interested in would have already started to email the respective lecturers for even more detail. And you could even approach lecturers outside from our biomedical science department. Like me, um, I did my research under the nostril department in a faculty of medicine of UM. And you could even reach out to lecturers from other you know, faculties or even other universities if you want to, but it's not recommended since it also brings difficulty to our course coordinators to be in contact with them. However, even if you aren't able to really locate a suitable topic for yourself, just chill because um, the course coordinators would eventually liaise with other lecturers and come up with a list of topics for us uh, students to choose from. But of course, until then, it is likely that someone else who has much more initiative would have already secured his or her spot on the specific topic by approaching the lecturers themselves. And yeah, did I mention that there's limited slots for each and every topic? So it's a dog eat dog world out there and the competition is very fierce and it's amongst your batchmates and your friends. So just a typical day in the Hunger Games, I guess. Now, after sending out numerous emails to different lecturers, you most likely either be given no f**ks at all or you get rejected straight up in the face. And it's actually pretty common to not get a pro positive response from them because some lecturers are just too busy that they might have missed your mail or you know just simply forgotten to reply yours. Also, not every supervisor might have an available topic in hand, especially for FYP students, so luck plays an important role as well. So yeah, story time. I even contacted a lecturer of mine once to ask about FYP vacancies that time, 
but unfortunately the lecturer was still deciding on whether or not to open up slots for FYP students. So that's a no for me. However, a few weeks later, one of my friends contacted the same lecturer and she got accepted. So being first doesn't always, you know, get you the slot or the spot, but you have to, like I mentioned, be lucky enough to get it. So anyways, if you do get a reply and the supervisor is also looking for FYP students to help them with their projects, well, good thing for you. And the supervisors would most likely want to have a short interview with you to just get to know more about you and also discuss on the expectations from both sides. Now remember, don't be afraid to ask questions. This part is really important, not only for the supervisor to evaluate if you're the right pick for their project, but also for you to evaluate whether the project suits you. Basically, get to know more about the scope of the project and also what is your involvement in it. Your FYP is supposed to be a platform for you to validate your interests in a particular field and help you learn the necessary skills involved in it. So again, unless you want to feel miserable for the rest of the year, well, you should ask questions. And in short, if everything goes well and if you, you know, you like the project that you're being offered, spin on a palm and just shake hands in agreement of this partnership and there's no turning back now. So for the rest of the video, I'll be splitting it into two parts, semester one and semester two of our final year because for each semester, we have different tasks to fulfill and yeah, it's a completely different story. So for our first semester or even way before our first semester, we start out by doing a lot of reading. And when I mean by a lot, I mean a freaking truckload of reading, just reading. Depending on who your supervisors are, they might or might not provide you with the necessary resources to go through. And also each supervisor might have their own ways of doing things. Some might need you to submit progress reports at the end of every week. Some might need you to have a meeting with them to let them brief you on what um, you should be doing. Some of us will have to start writing our re literature reviews, but there are also students that did not have anything to do for the time being as it was still considered early phases of this research. And yeah, we might still have studies or even exams to focus on. This is also why it presents the fact that everyone has a different journey or a different learning experience throughout their whole FYP, resulting in a wide spectrum of how students felt about it. And again, let's leave the drama out of today's video, but it's definitely something worth addressing in the future, so stay tuned. Now, after months of reading, we should already get a brief idea on what we are involved in, and it's time to put our knowledge to good use. When year four starts and you're back in campus, your supervisors will probably allow you to start some, you know, preparations or lab work for the project itself. And the time you spend in the lab actually depends on what your supervisors expect from you. I have friends who had to be in their labs from eight to five, you know, typical working office hours, but they're only able to be excused when they have classes during that time. I, on the other hand, only had to go whenever I needed to, you know, do my lab work or meet with my supervisor. And you'd think that you'd prefer my kind of lifestyle, but truth is, it has its own disadvantages as well. Such as, you know, spending less time with your postgraduates. And these postgraduates are masters or um, PhD students that are also under the supervision of your supervisors. And they might not necessarily be doing the same projects as you are, but being in the same field, they could probably point you in the right direction when you need some guidance on your project or even give you a tip or two dealing with the people or equipment in the lab itself. You'll be able to avoid some necessary dead ends and also conflicts with their help. So yeah, kudos to all the postgrads out there. Alright, by now you should have realized that this is no longer a classroom experience and there's no standard on how actually we are evaluated on, on what we have learned throughout the entire process, right? So since each of us have different topics and are in different fields of science, this means that it's also not possible to carry out a standardized examinations to evaluate on our performances and also um, review on what we have learned. So instead, here's how we are evaluated for our FYP. For the first semester, the grading looks a little bit like this. 
50% on proposal presentation, 20% on logbook submission, and lastly, 30% is evaluated by our very own supervisors. So try and get on their good side, right? Now let's start out with logbooks, right? It's basically a record of what you did and we must submit this logbook every week. And keep in mind this is submitted to our course coordinators and not your supervisors. Don't get it mixed up if your supervisors wants you to you know, submit progress reports to them as well. It's very easy to actually finish these logbooks. You just have to jot down on what you did or what you've learned throughout the entire week. And the tough part is when things start to wind up in a routine and you can't really elaborate differently from the 50 other times that you did the same lab work. But yeah, you just have to learn how to go rank and also in other terms, how to boost. Now let's talk about the proposal presentation. Basically, we're given 15 minutes to propose on our topic to our lecturers in the biomedical science department. And this presentation is pretty straightforward in a way that you have to explain the fundamental questions like what has been done previously, what are the gaps in the current research, how are we approaching it differently, why this approach, yada yada yada. Now the true story and how I f***ed up my first presentation I wasn't really familiar with the format of it since it's our very first time presenting it as well. So at that time, I was a little too preoccupied with my you know, practical part of my lab work, which involves me cleaning my red tendon samples. And eventually in my presentation video, I only presented on how I prepared my samples and nothing else. I even gave a very detailed explanation on how, you know, I used the back of my blade to scrape off muscles of the tendons and also how I use saline to keep the tendons moist. But that's not what the lecturers wanted to know. They wanted to know about the method or even the design of the, your, your research and you know the big picture like how much samples you'll be using, what are the controls, what are the experimental groups, you know how are you going to analyze your results and so on and so forth. And I was really clueless at that time, but at least I learned something, right? Also, lucky for me, I was given the opportunity during the live Q&A session to explain about the methodology once more as it was very important for them to know the information to see whether if um, there are any gaps or limitations in our approach, such as the lack of time for our research and whatnot. So yeah, it was 50% worth for this presentation and I almost failed because I was too occupied at keeping my tendons moist. Yeah. <laughs> now back in my time, we were kind of lucky because the presentation was done online, but I'm not too sure what it'll be like for a future batch of students. So all the best I guess. And now for Sam too. Now this is where things get tough. You have to finish up um, the research that you've been doing you have to present it once more, but this time it'll get worse because you'll be presenting it to pioneers in that specific field. And also you have a thesis to submit at week 12. You have even more core courses to attend for this semester compared to the previous one. And also you have tons of assignments to deal with. I kid you not, it was a hell of a ride but mostly just help. I won't go into too much of a detail um, about the presentation since it's almost the same as our previous presentation in semester one, but this time you have to present your findings and also results and also, you know, discuss on, on it as well. But same thing, we'll have Q and A's, but it's definitely tougher this time as the evaluators have years and years of experience in the particular field and would tend to ask more specific questions and yeah. I cried four times after that Q&A. Now let's talk about the thesis submission. Now honestly, it's not exactly a real thesis, but it's more of a scientific written report and we follow a format that looks a little bit like this. And I would say that it's probably the biggest part of FYP since it involves the reading that you've been doing since day one and covers all the way to up to what you've been doing, what you've managed to find and whatnot. So this is also one of the most time consuming parts of FYP because it involves us going through revisions and revisions between us and also our supervisors to amend that written report. It's also where some of my friends felt kind of disheartened when their supervisors were not too helpful or were simply not very satisfied with their reports and multiple revisions had to be done. And I must admit that it 
proves as a challenge since this is still our very first time writing a scientific report. But you know, some supervisors can sometimes be a little bit too demanding and has very high expectations from us. But remember, no matter how tough it gets, you'd still have to please them at the end of the day because they would be evaluating you as well. So yeah, all in all, even though an FYP is something that you don't get to run away from, it still is an essential part of degree life as it helps you filter through your interests and it also serves as a platform for you to get to know um, what's it like working in a research field or even experience the culture behind um, the whole scientific community. Also, one important aspect of the final year project is to shape us or even train us by working independently and also establishing um, effective communication with others. So it's not an easy path, I would say. You know, many of us have gone through pain and depression because of the FYP itself. But like I mentioned, that's a video for another day. And we just gotta move on from this point onwards. And I hope this video was able to give you some insight on what we actually do or how we get involved in research in our degree. So if you found it helpful, leave a like and share it with your friends and families. And until then, boy boy.